see one thing about having these DVDs and and, 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 and DVRs, because I go back sometime and look at how handsome I used to be <laughs> when I was in middleweight, right? Getting quicker. I'm. Y'all say I'm looking good, and I, I take all that great. But shit, I'm look like an old man compared when I was a middleweight. Far as my speed, yes. But my, I'm talking about. Yeah, I know, I know. But I'm just saying, far as my, 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 my speed, and I, I got a full pack instead of a six. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, I'm still ahead of the game, but I, I'm really looking at old tapes of me. But my point is this. I look at Pacquiao. Three years ago. Right? Right in the middle of it. Three years ago. He's smashing dudes. I remember Pacquiao when he was with uh, Marab Muhammad. Seriously, I remember Pacquiao when, when Pacquiao was like a little bit better than ordinary. You know, tough guy, whatever, and really didn't have a good defense. You know, lost a couple of fights early on. And then he just, boom! Right? Then you can live in our I lost my first fight and I shot up, so it's, you know, no suspicious. Yeah, I'm lost his first fight too. But I started saying, that's it, man, this dude, where he get this power? He just cracking dudes. Right? Fight hands, fight fans. Now, Bernard Hopkins ain't saying nothing wrong. Now, if you look at this fight poster right here, Manny Pacquiao versus David Diaz, this fight took place, I believe, back in 2008. This is the first fight that Alex Ariza supposedly joined the camp, you know, the one that, you know, you know, uh, Freddie Roach doesn't know anything that's going on. But anyway, now, you fought David Diaz at 135 pounds for the lightweight title, which is cool and all of that. You know, your punch output was crazy that fight. Double the amount of his. But you mean to tell me, for a guy who starts his career off at 105 pounds, to go from 135 to jump up to 147 to fight Oscar De La Hoya, who just ain't no regular bologna sandwich, to, to, to then come back, drop down in weight, to fight Ricky oh, Hatton you. at 140 in starch blast, knock him out in dominating fashion, then to go up right after that, back to 147 to fight a rough and rugged Miguel Cotto, who was only 34 and one at the time, I believe. And you knock him clean the fuck out? It doesn't make any sense. I hope this camera keep going. No, we're gonna this let is the not camera true. keep rolling. This is not, doesn't even make sense. Oh, yeah. Followed by fighting Joshua Clotty at 147. Then this just this this takes the cake. He goes all the way up to 154 pounds to fight for the vacant WBC title against. The cheating Antonio Margarito. He dado la primera mano que estaba bien el vendaje. Después, pero desde que me empezó a vendar Capetillo surgieron los problemas del entrenador de Moldy que que no podía dar dos vueltas en el mismo tape y que no podía dar que no más era una sola. There was such a distraction about the tape on the wrist. You know that that could be the fake out. I show you this to give you something else. So I checked the pad and when I checked the pad and it felt hard. So then the commissioner felt that he said that feels pretty hard. The commissioner flipped it open and a block fell out of it. Gotcha, bitch. Now, I don't like to put jackets on people that don't like to wear them, that don't fit. Is this your coat? <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> that guy in a little coat. That guy in a little coat. Don't. <laughs> that guy in a little coat. That guy in a little gold. Take it off, dickhead. I'm serious. Richard, what's happening? Oh, oh. oh dang. Would you tell me one fighter who started his career off at 105 pounds that can make those significant types of jumps from 135 Expose to 154 in a span of two years? I'll wait. Kraken dudes. Like, when fighters who have egos, right? Being brutally honest, like, yo, this dude hit me like, like a heavyweight. Like, we, like, we normally don't say that to you. Like, you know, yeah, man, with a good punch and all that, but, you know, we don't normally say, man, he hit me, I've never been hit like, uh, hey, by God. <laughs> I start sitting back saying, wait a minute, man, I'm stunned, and you're hearing allegations, and I'm saying to myself, like, wait a minute, like, oh, wait a minute. And then when things got really heated up, as years passed by, I seen the zoom decline like so fast, like it was like not knocking nobody out, not even hurting nobody. Now, fight fan, these 
These are facts. The knockouts just stop when Alex Ariza gets outed out of that camp. They just stop. And then he just starts looking regular. I mean, you're going through it with the Jeff Horns of the world. I mean, now you did get a TKO against Louis, Lucas Matisse, but that came late, six or seven fights later. But I mean, this guy has looked regular in the ring. Not explosive, not fearsome, just regular. And I mean, the power and the speed didn't truly all the way come back until Novada testing against Keith Thurman. A few moments later. Freddie, pack y'all on steroids. I'm like giving him a free talk. Hell yeah. <laughs> And then you, again, you're hearing things, you're reading things, I'm like, okay, all right, okay. I'm like, man, I don't know, man, like, I don't know what's regulated over the Philippines, what's not regulated over the Philippines, what's regulated in Philadelphia, well, the United States, or whatever. Uh, maybe, maybe some chicken foot, maybe some chicken stew. I don't know what's going on, because I know that people can label somebody because they became better, or they learn how to, you know, punch better, uh, uh, lift weights, get a fitness trainer, do this and do that. But I have seen a change from the physical, especially the power of Pacquiao in the last three or four or five years. Let us begin by introducing ourselves. I'm Hans. I'm Dan Franz. And we want to pop you up. How dare you? And fight fans, this gentleman standing to the left of Manny Pacquiao. His name, Alex Ariza. He was Manny Pacquiao's strength and conditioning coach. And I believe back in 2013, he was fired by Freddie Roach due to so-called suspicions of PED use with fighters. Excellent time in Macau for uh, the fans and the fighters. But with all that went on, the one big story that didn't break until you got back home was obviously the Brandon Rios uh, steroid test or you know PED test. Now, fight fans, if you don't know your history, Brandon Rios and Manny Pacquiao um, did battle a few years ago, and this is right after Alex Ariza was outed. And Brandon Rios was Alex Ariza's fighter. So for him popping dirty for PED use, I mean, the apple just wouldn't fall that far from the tree. And if you didn't get caught and everything was just speculation, I mean, damn, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Hell yeah. But I'll leave that up for you guys to decide. Bruh. What was your reaction when you heard that he failed that test? Well, you know, I know he has a new strength coach, and uh, I don't get along with the guy. And one of the reasons why he doesn't work for me anymore because he's a little, I think he's a little shady, you know. Um, I, I, you know, I, he used to give me a drink every day before workout, and I asked him what was what, what what's in that drink, and he would never tell me. Now, five fans, if this is such a shady, bad character, why would you? Just let him just give your fighter this mystery drink yeah. every day and you not know what's in it. Uh, oh, let shit. us begin by introducing be ourselves. Through. I'm Hans. I'm Dan Franz. And we want to pop you up. Bruh. Considering the drug and the blood testing and considering the so-called allegation, would you just do something like that? So I'm supposed to believe that Freddie Roach just walked around incompetent of the entirety of the years that Alex Ariza was there. But he just admitted that his fighter was taking mystery drinks. I mean, but hey, once again, I'll leave that up for you guys to decide, and you can do what you want to do with it. I didn't Is this camera on me? Yes, it's on. That's stupid. Use your common sense. Don't forget the blogs. Forget how you feel about me. Hate me if you want to. Love me if you want. But just use your common sense. And I said, you know, I need to know what's in that drink because, you know, you're giving it to my fighter, and if something goes wrong, I'm going to get the blame. So, you know, uh, so I, I think, uh, 
you know, he has to, he may have something to do, in my opinion, he's not, a, he's a little shady, and uh, so uh, he's with that camp now, and uh, it doesn't surprise me that that, that happened. No. Stop it! Y'all quit playing! Quit playing! No, I mean, that's... That's a, a major indictment right there. Obviously, he's the only new addition to, to Rio's camp, and this is the first time Rio's has tested positive. Uh, and then we had, of course, the Marcos Maidana fight, where you have a controversy somewhat in the corner. What happened with the, nap with the napkin? A few moments later. Say, man. Hey, man. Since when did Parkinson's disease make you blind, man? Since when did Parkinson's disease make you blind, man? You know a whole lot about this shady figure tactics, man. But then you want to act like you was just Ray Charles blind bumping in the wild card gym walls and shit when he was in the building. How dare you, you know exactly what's going on, man. You making me mad, man. Obviously, you've been in hundreds, if not thousands of corners, hundreds, if not thousands of fights. Did that look like some kind of routine action to you, or do you have your suspicions there as well? Well, you know, everyone has their suspicions there because it's very unusual for the... Uh, strength coach to be that close to the fighter. I mean, usually a cut man will work on a cut if that's a possibility. Uh, but he he's very forceful, and he, I was surprised that Alex Garcia let him in the corner actually. So it was very unusual for you know a strength coach to be so cl um, close to a fighter, you know. But you let your shady strength coach very close to you know your marquee, the marquee him. fighter in Manny Pacquiao. But it's just not strange, you know, when he's on Team Pacquiao. I get it. A few moments later. Okay, there's a little article by Fight by Ben Thompson on Fight Hype back in January 14th of 2014. What is the truth behind Freddie Roach, Alex Ariza, Manny Pacquiao, and the mystery drink? For whatever reason, flying under the radar of several media outlets is the fact that last week Hall of Fame trainer Freddie Roach cast his own cloud of suspicion of his star pupil, multi division world champion Manny Pacquiao. In a revealing interview with Seconds Out, Roach shared his opinion of former one-time friend and associate, Alex Ariza, who he referred to as Shady. I know he has a new strength coach, Alex Ariza, and I don't get along with the guy. And one of the reasons why is he doesn't work for me anymore is because I think he's a little shady, you know. He used to give Manny Pacquiao a drink every day before we worked out and I'd ask him, what's in that drink? And he would never tell me. And I say, I need to know what's in the drink because you know you're giving it to my fighter. And if something goes wrong, I'm going to get the blame. In my opinion, he's a little shady. Roach commented when asked for his thoughts on the news that Brandon Rios tested positive for a banned substance following his lopsided loss to Pacquiao. What Roach may or may have not, excuse me, what Roach may or may not have realized, however, is that his own comments now bring into question the five plus years that he and Ariza worked side by side during Pacquiao's rapid ascent through the weight divisions, racking up dominant victories from 130 to 154 pounds over the likes of Ricky Hatton, Miguel Cotto, Oscar De La Hoya, and Antonio Margarito, to name Holy a few. Holy fucking shit! Roach first hired Ariza back in 2008. Originally, he was brought in to treat, Pac treat a shoulder injury to Pacquiao's rematch with Juan Manuel Marquez. But not long after that, he was asked to overhaul the entire training program and was officially added to the team as new strength and conditioning coach. It didn't take long for the pairing of Roach and Ariza to, pro to produce sex successful results with Pacquiao quickly moving him up two weight divisions and, and notching big wins over Oscar De La Hoya, Ricky Hatton, and Miguel Cotto in a 20-month time frame. Pacquiao, the steroids. I Pacquiao was so dominant against bigger opposition after jumping three weight classes is likely what prompted world-class trainer Floyd Mayweather Sr. to first raise his own suspicions about Pacquiao's alleged using performance-enhancing drugs during a 2009 interview with Josh Slaughter of M Live. A few moments later. My honest opinion. I believe that he's on 
some type of symptom. Yeah, and one of the reasons why he doesn't work for me anymore because he's a little, I think he's a little shady, you know. Um, I, I, you know, I, he used to give me. I give Manny a drink every day before workout, and I asked him what was what, what what's in that drink, and he would never tell me. Gotcha, bitch. Freddie, pack y'all on steroids. I'm not giving him a free talking about. Y'all quit playing. Quit playing. Robert. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me. Y'all, I'm fighting for my life. How dare you? Floyd Mayweather said 14 days before the fight to the fight. Like you wouldn't get tested that day of the fight, but a full two weeks before you couldn't be tested. What about 15 days before the fight? That would still bother you? 15 days before the fight, I'm, I'm in heavy training in... Uh, a few moments later... Heavy training in... Uh, 15 days before the fight, I'm, I'm in heavy training in... Uh, no, we're gonna this is not true! Hey, um. This is not, doesn't even make sense! Oh, uh, hell no! You know, it's gonna be epic to my uh, heavy training on that time in... I think it's not it's not good to to have a uh, to do a blood testing on that uh, on that date because uh, p 15 days before the fight is it's gonna be heavy training. Man, this is some bullshit. Now, fight fans, I pulled up that clip to show you what Floyd Senior meant about what Pacquiao was doing when he gets in front of the camera. He started running his head down. That's a uh, uh, 15 days, uh, hippie training, blah, blah, blah. But you see, when it came to him putting all of the bullshit on Floyd, he ain't stuttering not one bit. You know, you take on Claudia after the negotiations with Floyd Mayweather falls through. We haven't heard it in, from your voice as of yet. Why did that fight fall apart? Yo, man, let's be serious here, man. Let's not act like Floyd didn't ask this man to do something he wasn't willing to do himself. So the fight fell apart and he was fighting Josh McClady because he was the only one willing to let him go in the ring on the needle. And that's just how I feel about it and those are facts. Hell yeah! I think there's a lot of, um, you know, Floyd uh, reason. That's why the fight is canceled. And... <laughs> you making me mad. Y'all see how fast he put that fucking excuse together? Now that's his truth right there. Bruh. I think there's a lot of, um, you know, Floyd uh, reason. That's why the fight is canceled. And that shit came off real quick. Uh, I think it's Floyd. Floyd doesn't want the fight. That's the reason why the fight doesn't even come off. And, um, yeah. I see what Floyd Senior saying, man. You making me mad. Um, what I believe is uh, Floyd, he doesn't want to fight. Gotcha, bitch. This dude is full of shit, so it's all Floyd's fault, but Floyd wasn't willing to put you through anything that he wasn't willing to do himself, Hell so yeah. you blame it on heavy training, 15 days out. This nigga full of shit, man. Bruh. If, if you, you see him now, he start doing this stuff like this all in front of the TV, you know, you, you know what that's about. What about 15 days before the fight? That would still bother you? 15 days before the fight, I'm, I'm in heavy training in, uh, uh, in heavy training in, uh, 15 days before the fight, I'm, I'm in heavy training in, uh, what? English, you know, motherfucker, do you speak it? Uh, heavy training on that time in, I think it's not, it's not good to, to have a, uh, to do a blood testing on that, uh, on that date because uh, p 15 days before the fight is it's gonna be heavy training. I hope this camera keep going. No, we're gonna. This let is the not camera true. Hey, um. This is not, doesn't even make sense. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced about a lot of them when it was, was uh, uh, <clears throat> but I personally myself I don't think that he can beat the floor with steroids in him or not. Floyd Mayweather can't keep going around saying he is the greatest now and of all time if he doesn't either go for Pacquiao or the winner of Mosley or Berto. Th that's my feeling. Bruh. See, this guy was always hypercritical of Floyd. And you heard what he just said. He can't see Floyd being considered himself the greatest if he doesn't go after Mosley, Pacquiao, and Berto. And he beat the shit out of all three of them, man. You making me mad. Bruh. Like one of the points that Mayweather wanted from day one and, and his people have been calling me and, you know, spinning it as have the Pacquiao people. Mm -hmm. They wanted on the Mayweather side, he wanted rigorous drug testing from day one, not just recently. So that's been on the table for them for a long time. Those suspicions about Pacquiao were then compounded later 
That year, as negotiations began for the mega fight with the undefeated pound-for-pound king, Floyd Mayweather, who declared his intentions to clean up the sport of boxing by requiring all his opponents to subject themselves to random blood and urine testing. When the news first broke of Floyd Mayweather's requirement for the mega fight to take place, both Freddie Roach and Alex Ariza were a united front when it came to any accusations love with Manny Pacquiao regarding performance enhancing drugs. I know my fighter. I know he's never taken drugs and he will never take drugs. I mean, I have trouble getting him to take vitamins for Christ. You give Manny a drink every day before workout and I asked him what, 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 what's in that drink and he would never tell me. Gotcha, bitch. And excuse me, in a video interview with Gareth Davies of The Telegraph back in February of 2010, a month after that, Roach was quick to defend a reason telling Michael Rosenthal of Ring TV, that's the first guy I went to. Alex is a friend of mine, and he works with me. My reputation is on the line with him. He assures me 100% that there's nothing out there. During that same time period, Ariza echoed Roach's statements. For the record, I don't work for the fighter Manny Pacquiao, American. I work for Freddie Roach. Anything I give Manny, or suggest to Manny, I would never jeopardize Freddie's trust in me or my relationship with him, just for a win for any of these fighters. I wouldn't jeopardize that for any amount of money or any amount of wins. I'd go under any lie detector test or reach explains during a separate interview with BoxingInsider.com. I've been working with Manny for almost two years. Do you know how hard it is for me to, to convince Manny to go do anything I suggested? It took me so long to go to Freddie, to show him, to convince him, to venture to start taking even multivitamins and protein drinks for recovery. Manny never did those things before. Of course, all this was before the two former friends and teammates had a bit of falling out that prompted Roach to fire Riz in 2013 and in their five year run as one of sports most successful training teams in the sport. That begs the question, are these latest comments from Roach simply the matter of an ex-friend attempting to assassinate the character of Ariza, or there really more to the story? Judging by their own statements given in the past interviews, it's extremely hard to believe that for five years, Freddie Roach had absolutely no knowledge whatsoever about the drinks that Alex Ariza was giving Manny Pacquiao prior to their workouts. In fact, on the contrary, Ariza made it very clear that Freddie Roach had a very active role in Pacquiao's strength and conditioning program, even pointing out that Roach was far more knowledgeable about the sports science than most trainers. Take a look at the following statements made by Ariza in an interview conducted in December of 2009, shortly after Pacquiao refused to agree to random blood and urine testing. Freddie is involved in every aspect of this, to the nutrition, to coming up with the special exercises, then we run them through Manny. He's very detailed. It would be irresponsible to do this on my own. Terry is phenomenal. Andrea is phenomenal research analyst. With Freddie, we formulated a program. A lot of hard work went into this. It's disappointing to see it's being shattered and shadowed by these steroid accusations. Most of it is textbook. Consistent. We try to be smart and positive as a team. If we do look at changing something, many will still look at Freddie. I still have to get Freddie's approval for whatever I do. Manny will always look for that nod from Freddie. Change is not always the best thing. That's why having a trainer like Freddie is so important. Freddie is an out-of-the-box trainer. If it makes sense to him, he'll try it. When I first talked to him, I was surprised at how much he knew about inter interval training and importance of nutrition throughout the day. He knew, he knew the basics. Just not the intricate details. He knows what most trainers don't care to learn. At first, there were some things I thought might not work for Manny. Freddie forced it. So we kept coming up with new stuff. He thought if we're going to move up weight divisions, we got to try something new. Without Freddie, this would have never worked. <clears throat> 
Note that this interview was conducted during the same time period that Freddie Roach and Alex Arizo were, un were a united front in regards to allegation of PED use by Pacquiao. Given those statements, it appears that Roach was extremely involved in Pacquiao's nutritional programs from the very beginning, particularly as he was moving up in weight, as both Ariza and Pacquiao would barely even take multivitamins, let alone any type of mystery drink. So... How much did Freddie really know? If, as a reason suggested in early 2010, when they were still friends, Freddie Roach was intricately involved with every aspect of the program, including the exercises and the nutrition, did he truly not know what Pacquiao was drinking prior to their workouts? Is Freddie Roach now telling us that he knew something was shady about Alex Ariza, but he simply adopted a do not ask, do not tell policy during that five plus years from 2008 to 2013? Well, it wouldn't be the first time that Roach said he suspected one of his fighters was using performance enhancing drugs, but turned a blind eye to it. I won't say I didn't know, Roach freely admitted back in March of 2010 when he discussed James Tony testing positive for steroids five years prior. I never asked him though. I never had a conversation. I could see his body structure had signs, his traps and stuff. He was either lifting a lot of weights or he was on something. In that same interview, Roach also insinuated that he knew another one of his fighters was using steroids. I think I had one one other fighter on steroids also, Justin Fortune. I know he'd been there before. Now, fight fans, what if I told you this same Justin Fortune was a strength and conditioning coach for Manny Pacquiao? What if I told you this same Justin Fortune rejoined Manny Pacquiao's strength and conditioning coach right before the Keith Thurman Nevada contest? A few moments later. Say, man, hey, man. You may get me mad, man. Who you think was a strength and conditioning coach right when this nigga turned Super Manny Pack, knocking everybody out? It's over nine times. Oh, Mr. Ariza. Wait for it. Justin Fortune. FBI, okay. I mean, you can't make this shit up, man. You making me mad. Roach added, although that second claim has gone unsubstantiated thanks to the defamation lawsuit filed by Fortune, and it should be noted that in a sworn statement, Roach said Fortune admitted to him that he indeed used performance enhancing drugs during the time that I trained Fortune. He told me that he had used cycle performance enhancing drugs when he was a tra when he was training for the World Games as a power lifter in his home country of Australia. Roach explained in a statement based on information provided to me by a plaintiff, I believe that he had used performance enhancing drugs. Now please understand that I'm not making a case about whether or not Manny Pacquiao knowingly or unknowingly used performance enhancing drugs. Though in this day and age we even seemingly clean cut do no wrong as do no wrong athletes like Alex Rodriguez and Lance Armstrong getting caught in PED scandals. It can certainly also happen in boxing, a sport that is well behind the curve when it comes to strict drug testing policies that is being said when a Hall of Fame trainer reveals that he's questioned a mystery drink that is given to one of his most accomplished athletes for nearly six years. A few moments later. He used to give Manny a drink every day before workout and I asked him what, 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 what's in that drink and he would never tell me. I think there's a few more questions that need to be asked. Why is Freddie Roach all of a sudden singing a different tune regarding Pacquiao's strength and conditioning program that both he and Alex Ariza seemingly work so closely on? If Roach was concerned about this mystery drink that shady Alex Ariza was giving to Pacquiao, why didn't he say something for two, three, four, or even five years ago? First, he insisted that absolutely nothing was going on. But but now he's saying he worked with a shady individual. Was he lying yesterday and telling the truth today? Or was he telling the truth yesterday and lying today? Which one is it? These are some of the tough questions that I hope some of the investigative journalists with West Coast connections to Freddie, Cro Freddie Roach can get answers to. Fucking goofy ass out here, nigga. You be just 
trying to argue with these little fag ass niggas. Get your bitch ass up out of here. But, you know, did he lost some of that or whatever? Because I haven't knocked nobody out in six or seven years since Oscar De La Hoya, and I've been trying to. Especially the last few fights. I even talked in the camera when I fought Carmen Rott. I'm going to go get a knockout. I'm going to try to get a knockout. Try to get one in my last fight. Got a knockdown, which I did break a drought in six years. I got a knockdown and got that in the frown, right? But if I was knocking somebody out in the last seven, eight fights, you know what I mean? All of a sudden, y'all should be looking like, wait a minute. Well, this is, like, what the hell? You understand what I'm saying? But I say, I'm trying to get a knockout. Now fight fans, you making me mad in a fucking world where we are hyper speculative about every fucking situation and any little thing that looks sus in the freaking boxing world or any part of the sporting world, we pay attention to. Nobody pays attention to a drastic jump this man makes in less than a year and a freaking half from 135 pounds all the way to 147, down to 140, all the way up to 154. Holy Starting his career off at 105 pounds. Now, that ain't the fact that this man is making jumps, but he's stopping guys like Miguel Cotto, Oscar De La Hoya, Ricky Hatton. He's stopping Dons. Top operators in their craft. And nobody says a word about it. But if it's Floyd Mayweather, your motherfuckers would be turning over every fucking sheet, flipping through every cushion, looking for any bit of evidence y'all can find for investigation. Y'all niggas making me mad, man. But when the singing senator come around, everybody get on their hot shit, right? Oh, shit. A few Here moments we go again. later. Tonight we're celebrating landmark moments in sports. Including, of course, the 20th anniversary of Shaquille O'Neal's debut rap album, Shaq Diesel. Shaq's masterpiece was the finest combination of music and sports until today. Okay, okay. so are you guys... We're ready to go, baby. Okay, you, you ready, ready to go? I think uh, that we are going to start with the song from Prose, no? Sure. Okay. Fire it up. Sometimes people only want Manny Pacquiao to buy it all the time, I can't fight for the rest of my life, you know? I have to do different things that make me happy, so I like to sing. The snow glows white on the mountain tonight, not a footprint to be seen. My job as producer, literally, is just to stay out of Manny's way. Let the magic happen. Don't let them in, don't let them see. Be the good girl you always hope to be. Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know. I just get into the studio and let it go, which, funny enough, is the <laughs> lyrics of this song. Let it go, let it go, and I'll rise like the break of dawn. Let it go. Let it go, cause that perfect girl is gone. It's like a metaphor, like the world is so so cold, but everybody is still so happy. So it really affected me because I use that as motivation in my life. You're an American, right? Yeah. I'm an American. I was in the Olympics. I, re I represent the red, white, and blue. Uh, you know what the American what, what the American rights just say? Well, why is this guy that's from another country? who come over here and make money and take it back to his country. But once again, I'm feeding American citizens every day. All I ask is give a little blood, give a little urine. That's a crime. A few moments later. Manny, there was a lot of negotiation with the type of blood testing that would be for that fight. A lot of fans are wondering, why not submit to WADA-style testing? Why wouldn't you do that? I'm not uh, saying that I'm not, I, I won't uh, submit the blood testing, but uh, not the day of the fight because uh, it's going to be uh, affected of my, of my condition. I will admit the uh, blood testing be before and after the fight, but not the day of the fight. I tried that before when uh, Morales uh, won, and, you know, it's very uh, disadvantage to me. You did blood testing before the Eric Morales fight? Yeah, Morales, Morales won the fight, um, we did a uh, blood test. Before the fight, you had a blood test that day? What? What the fuck? Manny! You sure, man? You doing a lot of stuttering, um, um, yeah, man, blood test. 
there to fight, that's what weakened me, man. You sure, man? I don't know. You don't sound too sure about yourself, man. And it's making me mad. Well, we gonna find out, fight fans. Bah, bah. You know what it is. Before the fight, you had a blood test that day? Yeah, I lost that, that fight because I feel I'm so weak in, uh, in the fight and so tired. Bruh. Man, this is some bullshit! Hell yeah! Now, fight fans, we heard it out of Manny Pacquiao's voice. Excuse me, we heard it out of the horse's mouth. Manny Pacquiao said the reason why he lost the El Terrible Manny Pacquiao one fight was because he was so fatigued and he was so tired because he had to take a blood test the day of that fight. Now this is interesting to me. I've never heard of any blood test making you so fatigued or so tired to where it is really going to affect your outcome in a 12 round fight. Something that you've been training for for months on then. <laughs> 15 days before the fight, I'm, I'm in heavy training and, uh, you know, it's going to be a pick to my uh, heavy training on that time and I think it's not, it's not good to, to have a, uh, to do a blood testing on that, uh, on that date because uh, 15 days before the fight, it's, it's going to be heavy training. Man, this is some bullshit! Say, man, hey, man, you sure it was the heavy training, man? Well, let's look back at the post-fight conference from Eric Morales, Manny Pacquiao won, man. A few moments later. You know, it's, it's hard for, for me because uh, he's a different style against uh, Barrera. So uh, Morales is, is his slugger, his boxer. So he throws straight in, uh, straight to the body, straight to the head, and, and he have an uppercut. So uh, it's very different from Barrera. Was, he, was his size a problem for you? Oh, the size, the size is not problem. You know, no, um, that's my regular weight, you know, and yeah, comparable weight. Uh, that's 130 pounds. Bruh. So according to Manny, inside of the ring right here, he's saying that the size wasn't a problem. You know, it's his natural weight, his walk around weight of 130 pounds. So, you know, you will believe that if you're a fatigued individual, you know, when, when you're not contributing to size, you're not contributing to uh, lack of speed, um, was that really the problem? But, I mean, let's continue. All right, I wanted to ask you about the gloves. Do you think that had you been given the, the puncher's gloves that you normally wear, Reyes gloves, that you would have had a better chance to do damage? I think uh, if we we were uh, using our uh, clitoris gloves, uh, I think uh, I knocked him out, you know. Gotcha, bitch! Ah. So was it getting blood extracted from you? the day before the fight that fatigued you because right here he said if he was wearing Cleto Reyes gloves on that night that he would have knocked Eric Morales out and Eric Morales versus Manny Pacquiao won so was it really fatigue or is this just another excuse I mean I will let you guys be the judge why didn't you why weren't you able to use your gloves how did that happen that well, your promoter gave that edge away on the camp of Morales, they request that gloves, and then uh, you know the Nevada Athletic Commission. This is, this, 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 uh, they want to use me a uh, winning gloves, because Morales he wants to use a uh, winning gloves. But you could have used your gloves. The rule, there's no longer a rule that you have to use the same gloves as the opponent. All right. You yeah, that's right. But you know, um, the, the, we follow the decision of the uh, uh, Nevada promoter. Uh, uh, the promoter. Because That's, uh, you can use your gloves when, if you want, if it's not in the contract, but it was in the contract that we were winning gloves. Was that a mistake to put that in the contract? We were never asked. Actually, I, I, do, not know, I do not know that, and, and you know... Um, All right, let's go, Manny. <laughs> You're killing me, man! <laughs> a few moments later... Man, this is some bullshit! Before the fight, you had a blood test that day? Yeah, I lost that, that fight because... I feel I'm so weak in, uh, in the fight and so tired. Bruh. A few moments later. Well, two weeks before you couldn't be tested. What about 15 days before the fight? That would still bother you? With 15 days before the fight, I'm, I'm in heavy training and, uh, you know, it's going to be a pick to my uh, heavy training on that time. And I just don't want to believe the truth. You don't want to believe it. So according to him, as he stated, it was because... He took a blood test 
the day of the Morales fight, and it contributed to his fatigue, and that is the main reason why he lost that fight. Yeah, I lost that, that fight because I feel like so weak in, uh, in the fight and so tired. Bruh. I hope this camera keep going. No, we're gonna this let the camera keep going. This is not true. This is not, doesn't even make sense. Yeah. I would have yeah. liked to use my gloves back to y'all set up to the fight, but I had to go with what was in the contract. Two days before the fight, now pay attention, fight fans. Two days before the fight, the Nevada State Athletic Commission forced Manny Pacquiao to take a blood test and an eye examination. The commission stated that Manny Pacquiao had failed to submit a mandatory medical examination the prescribed 30-day period before the fight. Freddie Roach said Pacquiao had been examined at a California clinic on March 4th, Bruh. and the test results had been lost. Murad Muhammad had former FBI agent Warren Flagg. I want to introduce you to the man that pays all my fighters so the federal government don't come against me. So when they say to me, you didn't get your money, or I stole your money, I say, well, you must talk to the flag man. Ladies and gentlemen, the former FBI of the federal government, a man that's my brother and my friend and my consultant, Warren Flag. They call him the flag man. FBI, open up! Okay, everybody got to... Listen up, okay? The doctor at the clinic and ask him to fax the results to the commission. Flag reported back to Muhammad that the examination had not been done within 30 days of the fight. Expose it had him. been done in Expose January. <laughs> Muhammad was then accused of having the test results stolen. Damn, son, that, where'd you find the this? Of, uh, do the blood testing on that uh, on that date because uh, f 15 days before the fight is it's gonna be heavy training. Now, fight fans, I know I gave y'all a little bit of the sauce in that article right there, but y'all need to tie in this article right here with the one I just read, so y'all can bring in full perspective what's going on here. Fah, fah. Anyway, Manila sports sports writers Rakai Trinidad of the Enquirer, Nick. Goinko of Manila Bulletin and Abak Cordero of the Philippine Star who wanted to check with Pacquiao on how he felt after the test were turned away by a certain Joe Ramos, one of the new faces in the latest groups of hanger-ons numbering over 20 who Roach earlier referred to as leeches. The group joined the Pacquiao entourage that drove from Los Angeles last Monday, Trinidad's Said, said they heard several voices from behind the door of Pacquiao's suite, but Ramos said they had no comment on the controversy and later claimed Pacquiao was asleep, which was unusual since it was the evening and Pacquiao was scheduled to have dinner with Karina Sanchez of ABS-CBN. Top-ranked chairman and promoter Bob Arum earlier told the original team Pacquiao members headed by business manager Rod Nazario and the Filipino journalist covering the fight that he had spoken to Mark Ratner, executive director, director excuse me, of the Nevada State Athletic Gaming Commission, who said, we are not going to let him, Pacquiao that is, take an unnecessary eye examination if he already had one. When Roach claimed that the medical exam results had been lost, Warren Flagg, a former FBI agent who investigated boxing for some 14 years, called the doctor in Los Angeles and asked him to fax over the documents to Ratner's office, which he promptly did. However, Flagg reported that the tests were done in January and that Finkel and Roach had failed to have Pacquiao undergo a medical examination despite having sent them a fax informing them of the requirements last March 4th. Flag said the last time we came for the Juan Manuel Marquez fight, Roach handled all that. He knew what the hell 
The deal was, and we told him what needed to be done. Murad Muhammad said this never happened in the past, pointing out that every fight we made sure that everything is done, that Pacquiao was prepared mentally, physically, and spiritually. Medical responsibilities were taken care of so that when Pacquiao gets to the site of the fight, he does not have these problems. And an escalating Word of word war, Murad accused Roach of taking pot shots at him and trying to tear my character down instead of taking care of his fighter and paying attention to his responsibilities to prepare Manny for this fight. Freddie is given press conferences, yet his fighter does not have all his tests done. This is unheard of. This is despicable. Murad revealed that when Roach claimed the medical examination records were lost, I believed him and I thought he told told us the truth and took issue with the commission only to find out that Freddie lied. What are the chances, Manny, of you and Mayweather ever fighting? Say you get by this fight, whatever Floyd does this year, do you think you'll ever fight Floyd Mayweather? Anytime I can fight him, uh, Floyd Mayweather, but uh, not of his uh, condition. Just uh, we follow the, the rules and regulation of the uh, athletic commission. Fight fans, Pacquiao was full of shit. And, you know, they keep created such a squeaky clean in image for him, the world just don't want to believe it. Now, Mike Tyson believed Vander Holyfield was using steroids, so he asked for water testing for their bout as well. So this isn't the first time that's ever been done. He's just trying to find another excuse to dodge the fact it looked like what it looked like. A few moments later. Are you that convinced that Manny Pacquiao is juiced that you will never fight him? Can I ask you a question? Where was Manny Pacquiao at in 96? He was a pro before me. What was he at in 97? What was he at in 98? What was he at in all these years? I'm saying, what? So you are convinced? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I'm just asking a question. That's all I'm doing is asking a question. Come on, now this is basic common sense now. I remember you as an Olympian at 125 pounds. And, and guess what? It, it took me years to get to here. Years and guess what? It took me years to get here. Exactly, fight fans. It took him years to get there. Years. And I emphasize on the years part because it doesn't take exactly a year and two months. I've never heard of a fighter, excuse me, in a year and two months being able to go from 135, bounce up two weight classes in the next fight to 147, face an Oscar de la Hoya, completely outclass him. Then jump back down, body of freaking Ricky Hatton. Then go back up, I believe, and then body a freaking uh, Miguel Cotto, followed by at 147, followed by Antonio Margarito. Where the fuck they do that at? It takes years, not a day, not a year and two months, and especially not a guy coming up from 105 pounds. And I don't want to hear no freaking Filipino power, no Mexican power, whatever type of power, bro. Let's use our freaking brains here. And I know that's something hard to do, considering we live in 2021. You making me mad. You go back, you go back and look at the pictures. At first his head is small, and then his head is, his head all of a sudden just grew. Come on, man, stop. Stop this, man. Come on, man. A few moments later. You know, you just go to this man in the street. You go to the regular person, the blue collar worker that takes care of his family, that, you know, is willing to put out the money for a pay-per-view fight and see a good fight and allow these people to make the money. Those are the people that count. And if you ask those people, well, they're going to say one thing, and they have said one thing as far as what I've heard, and that is, why would you walk away from $30 million on the table just not to take some blood, just not to take a test. If you're clean, what do you have to hide? Now, in no way am I saying that I think Pacquiao is dirty. And no way am I saying that all the blame goes away from Mayweather and not making this fight. All I'm saying is that that is what the regular man, the common man out there, and he has a right to think that and to say that. Why would you not right. make that fight right. if you're clean? Now, right. Teddy, Teddy, some of my Teddy, sources... Te Teddy, let me just say one thing. I bet you if you were training Pacquiao, though, you would only allow yourself to be dictated to so much. What about that? 
Listen, take it about, neither one of us are doctors, but I can tell you that doctors have stated that taking blood for a test does not weaken you. It does not. Now, psychologically, some people don't like it, but hey, I, Pacquiao had some tattoos on him, I think I saw. So you can't say he's afraid of needles. I don't think we can go and say that. So, you know, if it's really taking the blood, from what I understand, Mayweather's people were willing to make a concession where it would be two weeks away, where he would have enough time if that was really the fear that it seems like that could have been overcome. Look, my thing that I can add to this, again, from sources that told me, they said that people in the Pacquiao camp sent a couple of emails to the Mayweather camp a few weeks ago, about two, three weeks ago. And the first email was, what would the penalty be if our guy tested positive? The second email was, if he did test positive, could we keep this a secret for the benefit of boxing? Now, again, I don't know, other than my source, who I trust, told me that he saw those emails. Now, I also know that Tim Smith, the columnist from the Daily News, reported on the same thing I just said. Now, if that's true, again, that doesn't prove anything definitively, but you just wonder why those questions were being asked. All right. uh, this is so easy. Man, Ray Charles can see this shit. Come on now. Come on, man. I told you this basic common sense. Go look at the pictures. Y'all gonna tell me this man had to get bigger? This man probably went from a seven to one fourth to an eight. And a hat, a fitted hat. And you gonna tell me this is all natural. Come on, man, stop this. I'm going up in weight, but I ain't just walking through no damn fighters. I ain't just walk, um, walk this 106. Now he decided to just walking through Kodo. Come on, man. And Kodo, and Kodo, everybody else, Kodo hit. He getting up out of Kodo can't knock down Moldy, but he can. Come on, man. <laughs> this make this make sense, man. And, and guess what? And guess what? This is how this world is, man. Mother, you got right. It's just like this. Like, off. No, no. Floyd is scared. No, Floyd care about his family. Floyd is smart. At the end of the day, Floyd is smart. You know what I'm saying? My health is important. My health is more important than money. They can take all the money. My health is more important. If they say, Floyd, you know what? You can live a healthy life like you is right now, or you gotta walk with a limp, or you gotta walk bent over for the rest of your life, but you have a lot of money, I say take it all back.